And welcome back. This is Local Decision 2024. Election Day is coming. And joining us in the studio here at North Metro TV, Nolan West, Republican, Minnesota House District 32A. That would be Blaine and Ham Lake. And Nolan, thanks so much for stopping by. And uh, let's start out by uh, having you tell the viewers about yourself and why you're running again. All right. Well, hello, everyone. <laughs> I'm Nolan West. I'm running for state house to represent Blaine, Ham Lake, and Columbus. And it is my, well, I'm running for my fifth term. Uh, originally, I only represented Blaine. Now, with after redistricting, it's Blaine, Ham Lake, and Columbus. And I'm running again because one thing we saw this last two years in particular is not all Minnesotans were listened to, if we're really being honest. Because when there's only single party control of government, there's no incentive to listen to the 49.8% of the state that might disagree. And a lot of things happened that I think even the majority of Minnesotans wouldn't support. You know, 30% increase in tab fees, an automatic increase in the gas tax that's going to go on in perpetuity. So it's like these things that it's like, oh my goodness, you just didn't listen. Because there was a lot of dissent that was just completely run over. So I'm really motivated by that. And it's, you know, before my daughter is a year old now, just over, and it's unbelievable how life changing that is. It's unreal. And I know I say it's unreal, but it's something that basically half of the Minnesota has already experienced. But it really motivates you to try and ensure that the state is somewhere that I would recognize that she gets to grow up in. So I'm, I'm very motivated to ensure that she can have the same upbringing that I did. And in particular, I know we'll talk about it, that um, children in daycare can ensure that they are watched out for in the future, because that's what we've had to deal with, me and my wife, and this time. Yeah, well, let's get into that. You brought it up. And uh, so at one point, your daughter is enrolled at a Blaine daycare. And two employees have been in charge with child abuse and your, your daughter amongst them. Uh, this is a horrific experience. No parent should have to go through it, let alone the kid. Uh, what have you learned from this? And, and, and I sense now in talking to you before the interview, one of your missions in St. Paul, if you're reelected, is to, to fix this if you can. Yeah, normally I would be talking about Highway 65 in this situation, but Highway 65 seems comical in comparison to actually keeping kids safe. And my wife was smart enough to be aware and be like, hey, this isn't right. So Sybil was going to Small World Learning Center. She got some significant bruising, but in the hospital we were, we were informed about shaken baby syndrome. And basically that was the only thing related to any sort of abuse that we were aware of. And what we found out is there was allegedly a significant abuse going on. I'm sure that we will find out. I can get rid of that, pre that preceding word. But it was a lot of first-time parents. It wasn't just Sybil. It was, I mean, the whole reason it came out about, the whole reason these two individuals are being charged with multiple felonies, 17 years max prison sentence, is because they fractured a child's leg. That, and then a doctor saw it and was like, whoa, this shouldn't happen. I, was, I didn't recognize what's going on. And I, that, if there's anything I can do, period, it is any bruise on an immobile infant or even any infant is something you need to investigate. Because people think, well, OK, ch children, oh, children get bruises. But like toddlers get bruises. Infants do not. So if, if I only accomplish one thing from literally today and onward is educating people on that because a lot of there were uh, several families there that were first time parents in my same situation that didn't realize what's going on until something really horrible happened. I would like to see that. But going forward into this next legislative session, if I'm reelected, I want to ensure that we can catch these perpetrators immediately. Uh, as soon as humanly possible. We can't eliminate all abuse, but if we can catch them as soon as, early, as, soon as possible in, these abu in any abuse case, 
that will prevent abuse of future children so that this can't happen to as many people as we can help it. And, and this is not a red or blue issue. I, I would think this is something that you, you can get, uh, you know, bipartisan support on in St. Paul because, because nobody wants this and, and it does need to be fixed. Right. So that, that's exactly like it's not on my campaign literature, even though it's something that I think, oh, sure, make people like me more uh, because who doesn't want to protect kids? It's, well, one, it's a more complicated issue than most campaign issues. And two, it's, I want to make sure this happens no matter what majority there is in the Minnesota House or Minnesota Senate, no matter who's governor. I want to make sure we do something to prevent children from being abused. And I've been working with Representative Feist on the Democrat side of the aisle to make sure that we have broad support. So we're not pushing anything that can suddenly, you know, the weirdest issues get turned into political bombshells. It's, we're at that time of year. This shouldn't be one of them, and I'm doing my best to make sure that it isn't that, because I want to make sure no matter what happens, we can make sure this happens. And, you know, say I'm not reelected, I, I will still be at the Capitol advocating right, for right. this either way. And before we segue into other topics, are there any red flags that, that maybe you would notice now that you didn't then that you can tell parents out there viewing, okay, just be aware, have your radar on? Well, thank you for, so much for asking like, for that question. One thing I noticed when I entered the daycare, and I discounted this because I didn't, you know, you don't want to jump to conclusions. Right. When you entered that particular building, you could feel the stress. It felt stressful. I don't know how to describe it other than that. And if you have a bad feeling, you should, you know, it doesn't mean like 99, okay, 99.999% of daycare providers are angels descended from heaven who were so lucky to have caring for our children. But if you have a bad feeling, it's okay to ask questions. And two, any bruise, any bruise on an infant is serious and you need to get to the bottom of it. So if you have your child in daycare or in the care of anyone, if there is a bruise, get to the bottom of it. Yeah. Will you be able to trust daycare again? Well, we moved to another daycare. Uh, and one of, the th one of the things I'm passionate about is making sure that there's cameras in daycares. Because the only reason I believe that these individuals are getting charged with multiple felonies is because there, were, there was video evidence of them abusing children over a long period. But in this particular instance, this daycare only kept footage for a week. So we don't even know how bad it really was. And it was so bad in that just the little snippet that we could see that they were both arrested and charged with multiple felonies. And we're at New Daycare, uh, Primrose Schools, which is, I mean, I love everyone there. I don't, like when I mentioned the stress, you do not feel mm -hmm. that entering the building at all. It is, it is a remarkable difference. And I would say pe parents should trust their instincts. Uh, even, I'm always a very data-oriented individual, <laughs> but there is something to be said about trusting your instincts when it comes to your kids. And as a first time parent, I'm still learning. <laughs> uh, all right, now the easy question. Um, the, the funding is in place for Minnesota State Highway 65. There will be more pain before there is gain because you've got uh, two, three years of road work ahead of us. But, but getting 65 up to speed, you know, the gateway to Blaine and beyond, what's that gonna do for the city? It's crucial. I mean, over a thousand soccer teams, uh, teams, a thousand soccer teams come to Blaine for the USA Cup in Blaine. And the first thing they experience is gridlock on Highway 65. It's been a black eye, quite honestly, not just on the city of Blaine and Anoka County, but the state as a whole. So getting this fixed is incredibly important. So now we have around $200 million to fix it from 99th Avenue all the way up to 117th. That's a huge deal. That's going to make a really big difference. And with the new development going in on 105th, right off 105th, on the other side of the sports center, which uh, rebuilding 105th was the very first bill I introduced when I was first elected. So it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's legitimately exciting for me to see. I'm, I cannot 
It is a big deal. I hate the phrase, it cannot be overstated. Anything can be overstated, but it's a big deal. I'm very excited to see it. And, and Blaine will literally thrive on 65, right? I <laughs> mean, when this thing is done, it, and Blaine's already a great city. It's a game changer, right? Yeah, I mean, well, Blaine has really outpaced its infrastructure. <laughs> It, Blaine has grown. I mean, anybody who lives in Blaine can really see, like, I live just off 119th, right off, like half mile off 65, and I can tell you they're building houses where I thought they weren't allowed to build houses. It is booming. And with a booming city like this, if everybody's trying to leave because that's where the entertainment, that's where the jobs are, it makes 65 even worse. So with this, the development we're seeing on 105th, and this expansion of Blaine into a next level city is a really big deal to, well, one, alleviate traffic on Highway 65, but two, just to bring people to the city and keep people who live here in the city. And that's good for everyone. Uh, okay, Nolan, uh, define next level city. What exactly does that mean in your eyes? Well, mostly I'd say it's the next edition of Blaine because Blaine has been growing like crazy. So I've grown up here when I was a kid here is like 30,000, 28,000 people. Now we're talking 72,000 plus. And what I would say differentiates the next step is having a commercial center and with a significant amount of jobs that really keep people within the city as a whole ecosystem. And it's I mean, you look at Blaine 10 years ago, and now there, I think next level is the word you use to describe it because it's significantly improved. All right. Um, Minnesota, one of 10 states that taxes Social Security, and, and some people want to see that go away. Where do you land on that? Absolutely. I mean, it's so ridiculous to tax Social Security. Honestly, the federal government shouldn't tax Social Security. I mean, they compel people to give their money to use later, it's like, well, why are we taking their money if they could just put it in the IRA? Yep. And now the fact that we're one of the few states that still tax it is just dumb. We need to completely repeal that tax for everyone. It doesn't make any sense because it's their money. So let's stop taxing it all together. Do you uh, think that's something that uh, will gain more traction? It seems like it, it's definitely got, uh, it's been percolating. Yeah, slowly, we've been, it's been chipped away at, you know, when you're making a budget, they always find ways to not take away government money. And they've slowly increased the level of income that isn't taxed, and it scales now. But the, I would say, just on principle, we shouldn't be taxing Social Security. And I think we can afford it. Like, when we look at our budget we might be going into next year, I think it's something that we could afford to do as a state. And even if, like, saying we could afford to give you your own money back, I think people should be offended about because it's their money. So I think it's something we can find a way to do. All right, we touched on daycare, and, and now that, that's personal for you and your wife. Um, what about, we just had recently in Georgia, school starts and, and right away a mass shooting. Minnesota does have some tougher gun laws in effect, but do we need to do more? And, and, and what, what can you tell parents? You're going to have a kid in school at some point because there is a legitimate concern that, hey, will my kid be safe? Yeah, well, one thing I'd say, Representative Elliot Engen had a terrific bill to help keep schools safe and provide them the resources to Im improve the, safe, uh, the physical safety of their schools. That and having a school resource officer present, that was a really big deal in this last session is people didn't like politicians didn't like cops. I wouldn't even say people. I don't even think the people who elected some of these politicians believe what they were advocating for was removing school resource officers from schools, which I think having school resource officers in schools is incredibly important. One, it builds a relationship between children and the police, particularly in, in communities where that might be an issue, but two, it also protects students. So I think uh, if we can pass Representative Engen's bill from last year, uh, last cycle, and we can ensure that school resource officers are in our schools. I mean, kids are safe. Kids are safe in schools, and we have the tools to make sure that happens. What do you think is going right in Minnesota at this point in time? Minnesota has, so the thing about Minnesota, our workforce is second to none. We have the most uh, highly educated, very skilled workforce. 
And that has been sustaining us for a long period of time. Even though I would argue we're kind of working against it over time, holy buckets do we have a terrific workforce. That and we just discovered a massive helium reserve, the biggest, I believe, in the world up in northern Minnesota, not to mention over 8 billion tons of copper. So you look at, we have an, a tremendous workforce, we have ridiculously amazing natural resources. It's hard to mess up how great Minnesota is. So I think saying what's great about Minnesota is the easiest question we could possibly be asked. Um, in your eight years in St. Paul at the state capitol, is there anything that stands out that you're most proud of? Well, 105th and Highway 65 is a no-brainer. Being able to secure the funding from 99th to 117th Avenue and Highway 65 to ensure that gets rebuilt, uh, getting past the funding for 105th. We also passed some Social Security tax cuts, but not as much as I would like. Uh, those are the things I'm most proud of because I like to focus on issues that people actually care about, like regular people who wouldn't necessarily be showing up to a political meeting who just are living their lives, taking care of their kids. It's, they care about those issues, not you know tampons in the boys' room and who's using what bathroom. I would rather focus on the core functions of government, which is quality education, public safety, and ensuring our road system is as best as it can be. Are, are there any things you're going to focus on specifically if you go back to the Capitol, reelected? Well, number one is daycare safety legislation. So with Sybil being at the daycare in Blaine, I want to work to make sure that we can prevent that from happening as much as we can. We can't eliminate all, eliminate all abuse, but what I would like to see is any abuse that ever takes place in a daycare setting is immediately addressed. Uh, because if you stop it early, in the case that we see in small world, it looks like it was going on for a long time. And if we can stop it early, we can't stop all of it, but if we're going to stop it early, we can prevent more. That is my number one priority. We also have to make sure that, well, one, we have a lot of income leaving the state. We want to make sure that our world-class workforce stays here. With the rise of remote work post-COVID, we've seen a lot of people leave. We have enormous billions of dollars of income per year leaving the state. We have to give people a reason to work here. And we have a wonderful state, but there are certainly issues we're running into. And particularly when we see the boomers retire, the largest generation in United States history, eliminating the tax on Social Security is one of the key things we can do to keep people here. Because without you know the tax base, we can't do the wonderful things for Minnesotans to make sure we have success going forward. And uh, finally, why should the viewers vote for Nolan West? Well, what I would argue is I'm actually a regular human being. You have these people running for office that honestly, I think people look at them and they're like, who are these people? Were they made in a lab? And genuinely, <laughs> I, I just think, and uh, that's something that genuinely applies to both sides of the aisle, unfortunately. So what I strive is, as I said earlier, is focus on the issues people that actually matter to the average person. Highway 65, making sure that's rebuilt. Eliminating Social Security taxes so that you can have money in your retirement and not have a reason to be forced to move somewhere else. And I try and keep a laser focus on that. And one particular example is, so with this daycare legislation, I think we need to have cameras in daycares. But I'm not so arrogant enough to think that I have full mastery of the issue I know and I'm going to force this on to everybody. I want to talk to daycares, talk to parents, and actually have a conversation. So I've been focused on being transparent and actually talking to people and talking about my ideas before I just spring them on in the legislative session where you need to pay a lobbyist $60,000 in order to have your say. And that is something I'm never going to stop doing. It has been exceptionally difficult recently. I'm, on that particular issue, I have had a lot of pushback, and that's OK. People can disagree without saying they're evil. And that's one thing we've missed. That's one thing I want to bring back into politics is we can disagree without saying you are the spawn of Satan that needs to go away. It's unbelievable how we've gone. So if people want to see that back in politics, and I believe they do, that alone is why I would say they vote for me more than, oh, I'm going to put X, Y, Z back in your pocketbook. 
I'm just going to actually listen rather than shove things down your throat. And these really are incredibly polarized times. So no matter what happens on the national level in November, and let's say you go back to St. Paul, can you start to build bridges? Because I think without that, we're all in trouble. Yeah, so, okay, this is going to sound kind of meaningless, but one of the things I focus on is using people's time. I disagree strongly with Governor Walls. I think he's done some things that are not good for Minnesota that have been objectively terrible for Minnesota. He hasn't paid attention to huge fraud issues, but you know what? I'm always going to call him Governor Walls. I'm always going to respect the office. And just having that level of respect, even though that sounds meaningless, I'll always call my opponents, even if I think they're, you know, I think what they're doing is wrong. If we treat them with respect by just as simple as using their titles, I believe that makes a difference. And I think that's one thing we can do as elected leaders is treat our our opposition with respect. And that is a simple, objective way, because, oh, we can say we're treating them with respect and then completely not treat them with respect. If we just, just as simple as using titles, I strive to always, maybe I've made, maybe I've missed it once or twice, I'll always say representative, governor, senator, and treat my opposition with respect. Because, well, one, I expect to respect when we, discuss things in uh, any kind of debate. And I think that sets a better example for how we should treat our friends and neighbors is, oh, your neighbor is voting for Trump. Oh, your neighbor is voting for um, Harris. Well, you know what? There's still people. There's still an engineer. There's still an electrician. There's still a person. Why not focus on what they actually are rather than what opinion they have that you might disagree with? And I, that is what I, like, the simple tiny thing I think I can do. Maybe there's more, but that's one thing that I'm trying to stick to that I think might make a difference. All right. Well, thanks for stopping by. Absolutely. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yep. Uh, Nolan West, Republican, Minnesota House District 32A, Blaine, Ham Lake, Columbus. This is Local Decision 2024.